Gamer Guy Shannon and Clint Podcast. Hello everybody and welcome to the first edition of the Guy Sharon and Podcast. What? The Guy Sharon and Clint Podcast. I was we about should... to say Sharon had been cut from the podcast and I cut myself from the podcast. We, we should call it the Guy Sharon and Podcast though. That's quite a good... Oh no, that takes you out of it. The Guy Sharon and Clinton Podcast. No, the Guy Sharon Clint and Podcast. No, that Guy Sharon and Clinton Podcast. Yeah, that's quite good. that's my name. And then it's like in podcast. Oh my God. Either we've just come up with the best idea ever or the first coffee I ever had in my life, first two coffees, is kicking into my brain. Have you seen Limitless? And making me think everything's awesome. Have you seen Limitless, that movie where um, Bradley Cooper finds a drug that makes his brain work way better and he becomes a genius of the whole world? Yeah. (gasps) That's what I'm like right now. We've found your Limitless. Caffeine. If if you're just tuning in the show, or would you obviously, oh, far out. It's okay. Let me just say one thing first. Hang on. When I said Sharon had been cut from the show, that was a wrong thing to say. Yeah. Sharon has um, gone on holiday and we miss her. She texted me just before. She said, just la- and she's literally just got to LA, just landed, didn't sleep, officially been up for 26 hours. Woo! Hope was dog was good and uh, worker's choice. I'm looking after a dog. And I said, have a nap, mate. Warren is all good. She got up with me this morning to say goodbye. She said, that's cute. No time for a nap. I'm off to Chateau Marmont in three hours. Wow, she's going to try and meet... Um that bloody lady that she always talks about that no one knows who she is. Karuchi Tran. She, the, the only woman stupid enough to get with Chris Brown after his domestic violence charges. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we miss you, Shaz Dog, if you're listening to the podcast, which you probably most definitely are. Thank you all for listening to the podcast. We've got an awesome show coming up today. We have that amazing uh, guy in Sh- Clint's... Oh, my God. You say what was happening. The cover challenge, is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. The Guy Sharon and Clint cover challenge with Fenua Patawai is coming up. I drank coffee, obviously, as you can tell, because I'm all wired up and my brain doesn't work good. I think you're on the come down now, bro. My first time ever. Life Hacks was pretty good. It was amazing. It was um, good. Chang's Cream of the Crap was edited by Guy Williams And this so week. it was much better than it usually is. And Chang took on headphone karaoke. That is actually oh, really funny. Amazing. Guy Sharon and Clint on the edge. Hey guys, time for the hit segment. It's in the paper. Oh, it's in the paper. It's in the paper. Megan, you gotta do it more like it's in the paper. It's in the paper. What? It's in the paper. <laughs> oh my god, it's in the paper. This is oh you're you're getting good at this. Thank you. Um, this is the segment mm-hmm. where you get handed, Megan, we're choosing you today. We're throwing you in the deep end, mate. Sweet. The front page of the paper. And you have to quickly read the headline and make up the story, basically, from the front page. And this is so our listeners can be informed. When they get to work, they get to tell all their listeners a uh, story from the paper. And if people ask whether it's factual or not, they get to say, it's in the paper. They get to tell all their listeners, like they do a little workplace radio <laughs> show. Oh, they're, all, their, all their friends, like sorry. When they, when they get to the office and they set up their little microphone. For me, listeners and friends are the same thing. They're one and the same. <laughs> so here we go. Welcome okay. in, friends slash listeners. It's time for another installment of It's in the Paper. It's in the paper? Let's give the paper to Megan. Good what, luck. What paper is it, Guy? The New Zealand Herald. Now, Megan has the paper. Your time, Megan, starts now. Choice. Exclusive shoppers will soon have at a glance, he, oh, we've cut off a word, info as government plans star ratings for food products. So um, what this is actually about, this is crazy. Uh, shoppers will have this little picture there on the front of their food, like bananas and apples and stuff, that actually shows where the fat's going to go on your body. So, oh, like, wow. It's, mm. it's absolutely incredible. That is informative. It's a little, like, diagram chart, if you have it on, like, a packet of chips, it's, like, to your ass, <laughs> and they have, like, cellulite, all the little dimples and stuff. Banana, it's, like, good, gives you muscles. So it's a little, like, diagram that, on the food. That is genuinely, a, I wish that was a real, I, that is a real it thing. It is a real thing. Because it's in the paper. It's paper. in the paper. Megan, oh, the paper. you just turned up and just dropped the best, it's in the paper we've ever had. That oh, was wonderful. Stop it, you. That was genuinely really good. Better than the crap that I've ever tried to do. That was that was very informative and educational. Thank you very much. Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. It's JJ, Mike and Dom. Headphone karaoke. Yeah. A segment we stole because it's a hell of a lot of fun. Basically, we put a member of the show in noise-cancelling headphones. We blast the song that they're going to be singing down those headphones. So from their perspective, they can't hear their own voice. That's the most important part here. They can't hear how bad they sound. However, that's all we can hear because we don't even give them a backing track. So all we hear is how bad they sound. Today, we're experiencing Chiho Chang. Uh... 
I've just got to ask right now, does anyone else think this is going to be the greatest one we've ever done? Yes. <laughs> High expectations, Chang. Don't let us down with our expectations of how terrible you can possibly be. Well, I'm, I'm not like all the other Asians who's good at karaoke. I'm probably one of the worst people. I didn't know Asians were good at karaoke. Yeah, they're not known. I didn't know that was a stereotype. They're just known for liking uh, karaoke. Liking it, not saying yeah. I'm good at it. Chang, give us a mic check, mate. Hello, check, check. One, two, one, two, yeah, three. Yeah, give us a couple of scales. Hello. Oh, this is going to be good. Okay, that's not a scale, but... Um, <laughs> Chang. What's a scale? <laughs> the song... To, no time to learn what a scale is, mate. Your song today yeah. is by Bruno Mars. Oh, God. Already Trouble. It's the wonderful song, Natalie. Oh, God. When you're ready, Chang, okay. you push play on, and you on. take it away. Okay, hang on. All right, I'm playing the song now. Playing the song. Oh, never you get this. Never get get the call. No, no do this again. Turn, turn down <laughs> that's the road. And it do 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 again. Well done, to the little light. God, God, I've been blind. Cause that's you say everything, everything, everything. All right. Like the little man. Never lose the lead. Oh, this is such a hot song. <laughs> Where are the words? What is it? Turn the lights. She better says one line open. It's like you're about to door. Cause one's in my head. So no, no. <laughs> Natalie. She ran away with all my money. And she got for fire. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Natalie. She's probably out there thinking it's funny. <laughs> Telling Brad Brie Bond. Ah, ah, ah. Well, I'm digging. I don't want to stop him. For this gold digging bitch. <laughs> Watch him. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That is the <laughs> only song. Chang Hunt, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Chang, how do you feel like you went? I screwed up the beginning. The beginning was really hard. The you screwed was up great. just the beginning. <laughs> wow. I just would have thought of the whole thing. Out there, there is someone called Natalie, and she probably does think it was funny. Chang, that was hilarious, mate. Well done. Next, we would like to have some <laughs> feedback for Chang. So if you have some thoughts on that no. performance, you can call us right now on 0800 The Edge. Especially if your name is uh, Natalie. <laughs> You've just joined us. Chang Hung just attempted to sing Natalie by Bruno Mars. It's JJ Mike and Dom's Headphone Karaoke. I don't want to brag about it, but it could be the best or the worst. It could be either way. <laughs> maybe worst. maybe it was so bad it was good. <laughs> Would we say that? Oh, Megan! Oh, Chang, you didn't even say one English word apart from the B word. Like, that, that, that was it. Well, the, the beginning was really hard. Let's not find out what Chang thought of it. Let's find out what some of our listeners thought about your rendition of Natalie. Okay. Steve, what did you think of Chang's song? I just thought that was such an appropriate song to play because my ears are bleeding out, mate. Oh! <laughs> Obviously, no offense to Chang. Yeah, Chang, have you, why are you offended? Have you ever pr- prided yourself on your musical ability? No. <laughs> no. Steve, Steve, could you understand quite. any of the words Chang was saying? Oh, I thought he was speaking Asian, mate. Oh! <laughs> uh, the language of Asia. <laughs> Asian. Yeah, yeah. I love this guy. I thought he was speaking Asian, mate. Such a cultured dude, eh? Thanks, Steve. But, but good on you for trying it. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, <laughs> Steve. Have a good weekend. Uh, uh, see you, mate. We've also got a Natalie on the line. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm glad a Natalie, Natalie called. Hang on, mate. Let me do the buttons for you. <laughs> Natalie. Hang on. She's not here yet. Natalie, are you there? Yeah, hi. Hello. Natalie, how are you? Natalie, that song was specifically for you. I um, know. Were, I you, were you out there thinking that was funny? <laughs> yes, I did think it was funny. I bet you loved it, Natalie. Ooh. I did. Oh, see? <laughs> It was great. Well, yeah, she, it was very funny. She is speaking on behalf of all the Natalies in the world. Mm-hmm. Are we ready for a replay? Chang, would you like to hear how you sounded? Y- yes or yeah. no? Okay. <laughs> I mean, Natalie liked it. This so. just happened. This was Chang's rendition of Bruno Mars' Natalie for headphone karaoke. Guys, she better says one line open. <laughs> this I do about the door. Cause one's in my head, so no, no. <laughs> Natalie! She ran away with all my money. How could you not understand that? And she got more fun. Natalie, she's probably out there thinking it's funny. <laughs> Telling rugby bun. Uh, uh, Telling rugby bun. <laughs> I don't want to stop him. For this gold digging bitch. <laughs> Whoa. Well, that is the only song. Jig, hi, ladies and gentlemen. Oh.
That's how you went, mate. I was great. I thought I was great. Okay. I would have, I would have gone through the next okay, round. Okay, shut actor. up now. <laughs> Cut his mic. Cut his mic. Oh, my God. He it's lives, enough singing from him from one day. He lives in his own little dumpling, that man. Congratulations, <laughs> Chang. That was headphone karaoke. <laughs> well done, Chang. Guy Sharon and Clint on the edge. Um, uh, there is something that Guy has never drunk before, which I find very hard to believe. Very hard to believe, Guy. In my life, I have never had any more than a sip of a cup of coffee. So you've had the taste of coffee before. I've tasted it before, yeah. I've had a coffee-flavoured chub-a-chub. I've (laughs) sipped my mum's coffee when I was a kid. My mum tried to bully me into coffee. And it's one of those things where you you always rebel against your parents. Yeah. Some people get dreadlocks. Some people get a mohawk. Some people get a tattoo. I didn't drink coffee. That was my big rebellion. So you you have decaffeinated blood. You've got coffee virginic blood. Yes, thank you for making that terrible virgin joke. I appreciate it. I am a coffee virgin. That's exactly right. Mate, it's not that bad a joke. It's a terrible... I ha- That's my one of my pet peeves is when people always say... But they're like, you've never done stand-up comedy before. Oh, you're a stand-up comedy virgin. I've never driven a car before. You're a driving the car virgin. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just yeah. someone who's never driven a car before. If I'm you... someone who's never drinking coffee Megan, before. Megan, correct me if I'm wrong. Yep. If you've never had your hair dyed before, you have virgin hair, yes, right? Absolutely. There you go. It's, it's a not thing. a sex thing, mate. It's I know you're just, nervous about sex. It's just, a sh- it's just a shitty joke that I don't like. Let's pop his cherry. Oh. No. <laughs> Damn you, Chang. That is the next thing. <laughs> next on the show, we will give Guy that first ever drink of coffee. Not too much is going to happen here, but I'm just really curious over the course of the morning mm. what a double shot of coffee. Watch out, 7 Is that a lot? Is that a big quantity? Uh, yes. It's a bit, yeah. This is history in the making. I've never done this before. It's going to be a disaster. What about a big announcement right now? Oh, this yeah. is huge. <laughs> this is history in the making. Chang, you should be more excited about yeah! this. Are you talking about you having a cup of coffee? <laughs> well, if you guys are going to make me do this, then we've got to do it right, because this is dramatic. I, I don't know how I'm going to react. Okay, I'm with you, mate. I'm with you. Am I going to be real real pissed for the rest of the show? Well, well, You're already quite, you know, so loud. This, this, is a man, so. this is a man who has never been drunk before. Yeah. Uh, have you drunk a whole beer before? Um, over the period of like six hours, so not really. I've nursed, I've nursed one for an entire New Year's once. But you've never been pissed. I've never been pissed. Never even close to it. Um, and it doesn't stop there. Guy's body is such a temple that yeah. this man <laughs> has never um, even had a cup of coffee before. That's pretty amazing, actually. Yeah. So I thought this morning, seeing it's the end of a long week of early starts for us, are yeah. you feeling a bit tired, mate? I'm. Sh- I, I've dr- I slept three hours last night. I'm a shocker. Yeah. So I genuinely need this, so I'm really happy to start this experiment right now. Megan, what? how do you think this is going to go for Guy? I don't think it's going to go... Well, I think it's going to go well for us, except, like, he's already quite an enthusiastic person. I see why you don't need coffee, Guy. That, I am worried for about 7.30 of how... how I think you're just going to be like, yeah, let's go! Let's I'm going to be buzzing, this. I'm going to be wired. Chang's fired up the Studio Nespresso machine in the background, and he's currently um, pouring you a shot. Studio Nespresso. This is going to be so good for me. Can, this, you, can you smell the coffee? It's it's a Colombian. It smells. I, if you haven't had coffee before, I hate the tastes. Mm-hmm. I hate a chubba chub flavor like coffee. I hate anything um, mm-hmm. coffee related. So yep. I'm not. I'm not looking forward to the taste. But I am looking forward to now being able to go for coffee. Okay. Like when people always go, you know, it's one of the things people say. They always say, catch up for a beer, I can't do that because I don't drink. Catch up for a coffee, I can't do that because I don't drink coffee. Uh-huh. Now I can finally catch up for a coffee. Text me, people, we can catch up. Do you have a chaser? Because that's not going to taste nice afterwards <laughs> if you. Um, what? <laughs> it's like. So, what am I drinking here? What is this? Exactly a double shot Nespresso. A double Colombian. shot Colombian Nespresso. It's so, quite a lot, actually. Do so I just scull it back? Yeah. Give, it a, give just, it a sniff first. Yeah. Smells revolting. <laughs> Looks. Like something that comes out of uh, the bottom of a port Now for my first sip. You're shaking. Oh, I burnt my tongue. <laughs> just it tastes the, terrible. Just drink the whole I thing. I can't scull it. It's burning my tongue, Chang. <laughs> this is classic radio. <laughs> it's best. He's a slurper. Is that not how you're supposed to drink it? No, you, yeah. that is actually how, how you're supposed to drink it. How do you people no, drink no, this? That's how you're supposed to drink it. How do you drink this? Um, it's less, Why is it in such a comically small cup? It's less of a want what? and more of a need for people like us who are highly <laughs> addicted to it. Yeah. But 
Ha- on Am I hyper th- yet? Has this happened? <laughs> no, it's going to take a little bit. Can I go on a on a coffee date yet? No, <laughs> you've got to finish the coffee. We'll look. We'll play an air break. You just sip away on this your coffee. I feel crazy. like an adult, like a refined Italian gentleman. You look ridiculous. And this is more of a long term piece because over the next hour we will be able to appreciate the true effects of coffee on Guy. Ah. <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint. Feeling yeah. good. Guy Sharon and Clint. On the bloody edge. Life hack. <laughs> Entry granted. Uh, life hacks. If you don't know what life hacks are, then you should get on the internet because it is awesome and I believe that the internet is changing the way that we do business. Basically, they're like little tips. <laughs> That are gonna like save you time and make your life better. For example, and Clint, get the life hacks buzzer ready for this one. I don't call them applications anymore on your phone. I just call them apps. Saves time. It's easy. Life hack. Life not hacked. Uh, no entry permissible. That was a good one. Guy, well, you didn't come you up with it. Everyone does that already, so it's not a hack. So um, here's another one from um, the internet from a website called BuzzFeed.com. They love life hacks and stuff like that. Um, if you spend a while looking for something, after you find it and use it, put it back in the first place you looked for it. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Life hack. <laughs> Why have we never thought granted. of that before? You just like that because it wasn't my idea. You hate all the ones that are my idea and you like the other ones. Text into 3343 or 0800 The Edge. I'm sure Clint will like your ones because he hates all my ones because he's a meanie. why do you think that I'm the one deciding? It's the life hack machine that's deciding. <laughs> there is no bias involved with this. The life hack machine speaks only truth. <laughs> Charles, what's your life hack? Hey, good day. Um, if you're out of shampoo and you're in a rush, yeah. you mix baking soda and corn flour and use your biggest makeup brush to brush it in your hair, and your hair gets rid of all the oil, dirty oils and stuff. That is genius. Yeah. I love that. Life hack. Your name is... Entry granted. I love that you're like your biggest makeup brush because you guys all have a selection. Charles? Well, well, my, my partner does it, not me. Right. I was going to say, Charles, how big yeah. is your biggest makeup brush? <laughs> I would also ask... Not, not that big. Ch- not Charles, that big. it sounds like you're just making some glue paste and putting it in your ear, <laughs> hair and you'll look like a crazy person. I wouldn't want to wash it well, out afterwards. Well, it's only dry powder that you're brushing in. There's no water or anything else. Hang it's- on. Did you say corn syrup? Flour. Oh. Corn flour. Who's, oh. who's got corn flour? Somebody who likes thick custard. Yeah, people in their house. All right, Charles. I've got corn flour. Charles, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go get some corn flour. <laughs> Entry granted. Here's a cracking one from the text machine. Life hack. Don't have a fry pan? You can cook bacon in hair straighteners. Life hack. Life not hacked. What no entry mean? permissible. That is genius. I think it's genius. When that came in the text machine, Megan goes, is that a real one? I'm going to try it tonight. Well, technically, you can do it. Like, it probably is possible to cook some bacon on a hair straightener. But it's probably not great for your hair straightener or for your bacony smelling hair. Or for your bacon. <laughs> It's not really good for anything, to be honest. Hey, give it a try and night, Megan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us know how it goes. You do it, you do it, yeah. Um, do we have some callers? Here's one. Do you want another one from the text machine? No, no, do do? we've got Alex on the line. Hey, Alex. Oh, hey, how's it going? Hi, what's your life hack? Uh, well, I texted through, um, because yesterday, uh, you know, walk down the street, it's pissing down a rain, and mm. no one's, um, using umbrellas. Absolutely. So your life. So ha- I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, why don't you use an umbrella? So I text it in, um, use an umbrella. <laughs> <Life> Genius. <laughs> Entry granted. They're just so hard to take around these days. I think. Like, what do you do with an umbrella once? You- <laughs> don't, don't seriously answer his question. His life hack for it raining was ha- use yeah. an umbrella. Common sense. Right there. <laughs> it's a shocker. It's like sick of your shoes falling off. Get some shoelaces. <laughs> sick no. of your your your, your shirt. Your your um, body being na- naked. Wear a shirt. <laughs> Jasmine, what's your life hack? Um, to put clear nail polish on top of your buttons so they don't pop off. Life hack. <laughs> Entry granted. Don't just give her an entry granted. What are you saying? You put n- nail polish on a button and it stops it from popping off. Yeah, it stops the string from, like, breaking and making the button fall off. There you go. Do you know, clear nail polish is pretty much the answer to everything. If you're wearing stockings, man or woman, um, and you get a little tiny nig before it turns into a huge ladder, just put some clear nail polish on it and it won't start to spread. Okay. Wait, wait, just wait. We'll just rewind two seconds. Yeah. Man or woman wearing stockings. How many men are wearing I'm stockings? I'm not going to discriminate. Some men might oh, wear fair stockings. enough. Yeah, fair enough. Be equal. Be equal. To be honest, if you're a man wearing stockings, you probably also have some clear nail polish. Yeah. <laughs> 
If you're a man wearing stockings, kia kaha, mate. <laughs> kia kaha, bruh. Lizzie, what's your life hack? You there, Lizzie? Hi. Um, yeah. If you drop a battery two inches onto a hard surface and it bounces, it's dead. And if it doesn't bounce, it's still got life in it. Uh, you amazing. know what, Lizzie, before I give it to you, I've got a battery right here. Okay. So, we, so you're saying to me, if this battery doesn't bounce, then it's still got juice in it. This isn't real. Yeah. Which end do I drop? The pointy end, the positive end, or the flat end, the negative end? I don't think it matters. Okay. Two uh, inches. Two just, inches. Just two inches. <laughs> here we go. It, it actually, he, he dropped it right on its end and it sat up. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's still alive at the end. No, no, this is not one. Where did you get this from? My dad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dad. It's from my dad, dad so like it him. must be true. It's in the paper. It kind of seemed like it worked, so we've got to give you this. <gasps> Life hack. Entry granted. I don't know about that one. Someone's texting it. That was a very dodgy one, but it comes from her it's dad. Quite underwhelming for the radio so, as but, well. It's just us dropping a battery <laughs> on a desk. Guys sipping coffee, us dropping batteries. Someone texted in to say you can put clear nail polish on your warts to c- kill them off. Hey. Oh, okay. Um, here's a good one. Life hack. If you need a comb to comb your hair, but you have no comb to comb your hair... Use a Velcro strap on a wallet or a Velcro strap altogether <laughs> and use Amazing. the scratchy part to comb your hair. That's, a great that's also great. That's also a great one to make yourself look like an insane person. <laughs> Just dragging your wallet through your hair. I Here's a good one. one. The silver part in your door frame when your door clicks in can be used as a bottle opener. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Life hack. Entry granted. I tell you what, there's not much that can't be used as a bottle opener if you've got the right <laughs> angle. People are texting in amazing stuff now. If you don't have a car, use a bike. Great life hack. <laughs> life hack. Entry granted. Someone saying Listerine kills nits. I think people just kind of come up with ideas. After that one who had the, cor- the cornstarch idea, people just having ideas to get you to put mental stuff in your hair. <laughs> After this, is going to be Chang's going to be in the bathroom trying out like glue and stuff in his hair because he thinks it's a life hack. I'm trying that bacon straighteners one. Guys, Sharon and Clint. Itch. Welcome to Cream of the Crap. This is supposed to be our... Um, uh, best bits from our crappy week, the best bits that we did on in the show. Normally it's done by Chang. Chang, welcome to the studio, mate. Hello, Guy. Um, you said that directly to me. Why, why are you interesting, um, Sweet. Clinton, Clinton, Thanks, Megan Chang. as well? Oh, hello, Megan. Hello, Clint. Hello. hello Thanks Chang. for filling in, Megan, actually. Thank you. That's the, lovely. The reason, the reason Chang was maybe a little bit hostile towards me is because I cut his lunch a little bit this week. <laughs> I decided Cream of the Crap wasn't up to scratch, so I, he wasn't choosing the best bits from the show, so I, um, I went out of my way to find little highlights of the awesome things we did. Of course, if you want the full versions of things, um, you need to check out our podcast because we did like an interview with John Campbell that was amazing this week and stuff like that. How was it being the editor of Cream of the Crap? It was very, very stressful. <laughs> Because we don't have that many highlights, so I now understand Chang's pain mm. as he trawls through the few good things we did every week. Do you have an apology to make to Chang yet? Or do no, you, do you no, no apology. It's still a thousand <laughs> times better than the crap that Chang did. Oh. All right, here it is. Cream of the crap. Guys, Sharon and Clint's Cream of the crap. What up, bros? Special Cream of the crap guest editor Guy Williams doing it this week because I thought Chang was appalling. We filled in for JJ, Mike and Tom this week the best way we knew how by doing headphone karaoke. First I was appalling. We think you've had enough and I'm about to give it up. Oh, oh, I will never let you down. Was Clint worse? You be the judge. But now they know Let it go Let it go Can't hold it back anymore Let's wash those terrible sounds out of your ears by playing you Ginny Blackmore's cover of Sam Smith, Stay With Me, as part of the Guy Sharon Clint, yet to be named cover challenge. Oh, won't you stay with me? Cause you're all I need. This ain't love, it's clear to see. But darling, stay. My favourite interview of the week was our AMA with John Campbell, where Shaz Dog asked him what his pet peeve was. Uh, number one pet hate would be people saying like. I knew it! Like. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I was totally like. I and mean... then she was like, and I was like, I said to my children, like what? Don't say like! <laughs> you can say the F word, you can pick your nose and eat it, but don't say like. It was an AMA, so I had to ask, does he really hate me? Obviously, I think you're a clever and brilliant and loving Don't man. kiss ass now, John. And a lot of it is just sexual that tension. Was 
least favourite interview of the week was Ricky yeah. from Geordie Shaw. Ugh, gross! So they went to your parents' house, yeah. Yeah. slept together, yeah. and urinated on the mattress. Yeah, yeah. That's effed up, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Do you ever think it's of as well? That was not happy <laughs> at all. Last and also least, we threw Shaz Dog a Mexican send off and it went terribly wrong. And the stick that's in front of you? I've got the stick. Oh, no. Spin around a couple of times. She's going to break something. And now find the pinata and swing off. Oh, no, 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 the TV. She just broke oh, a TV. She just oh, broke the TV. Oh, Keep the party going. Oh, Keep the party going. <laughs> Thanks for letting me do this, Chang. It's been, uh, I wouldn't say an honour, but anyway, I'll let you do the final send-off. That was Guy Sharon and Clint's cream of the crap. Guy Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Arriba. Thank you, Guy. Well done, mate. Hey, any time, except for next week when I can't be bothered doing because it, it was actually quite a lot of work. <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Earlier this morning, we gave Guy Williams his first ever... <gasps> coffee how am i feeling yeah how am i going what's the diary of guy williams say right now i'm a little i'm a i'm a i'm a i'm a i'm pretty normal i think yeah normally quite a hyper dude you are my tongue is extremely burnt because you guys bullied me into uh trying to scull it which of course i forgot that coffee is smoking hot yeah and uh my head hurts i've got a headache yeah i don't know if that's because of the coffee it will or- be yeah that's because of the coffee. So, guy, can- why do people drink coffee? Because you a headache. No, it doesn't give you. Yeah, it doesn't, you guys are idiots. It doesn't give you a headache if you normally drink it. What are the bad side effects? None. None. Just heaps of energy. Good conversation. <laughs> oh, you might need to go to the toilet soon. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah I might, feel a little bit. Um, a do- little bit. Uh, uh, I feel a little bit diarrhea. Yeah. Yeah. That <laughs> is, is that actually? Is that one as well? <laughs> yeah. This is bullshit. <laughs> so, Listen, what did you guys do to me? I complained um, 15 minutes after drinking his coffee that it hadn't done anything. Um, so we made him another one. If I've we, had two. Yeah, if we were to measure it out, you if, say it was from a cafe. Yeah. We did it out of an espresso machine. You've had four shots of coffee. Yeah, okay. two double flat whites. Okay, is that a lot or not lots? It's four coffees. That's a lot of coffee. Feeling good, guys. It's going to be a good. It's going to be a hell of a day. <laughs> coffee. I'm. It's my new thing. I'm a trendy. Next, I'm a. Tr- I'm a trendy. <laughs> I'm a trendy guy. <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint. Edge. Right now in the studio, you might remember him from his time touring with Stan Walker. I remember him as one of the stars of X Factor, where they introduced him as Fenua Patua. <laughs> Woo! <Woo-hoo! laughs> morning, Fenua. Good morning. Good to have you in the studio, mate. Thank you for having me. Haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, yeah. It's been uh, it's been pretty crazy. I mean, after the show, um, jumped on tour with Stan Walker um, and that was like a month and then summer was on tour with Guy Sebastian but in between there man just pretty much flying up and down the country gigging and yeah. singing and living the dream ladies and gentlemen please welcome back to the studio star of X Factor all round awesome guy he's open for Guy Sebastian and Stan Walker the wonderful Fenua Patua am I saying your name right mate yeah, yeah, Patuai, Patuai, so good. <laughs> Up to that you. was a no. <laughs> you're like, no. guy, you're terrible, and I know you're not going to get any better, so I'll just roll with it. <laughs> Welcome to the studio. Bloody good to see oh, you, mate. Oh, good to see you too. Thank you so much for having me. Oh. oh, it's so good to have you. I personally was a huge fan of you on X Factor. You were known for your huge, awesome voice. And being not amazing at dancing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm not a dancer. So. You're one of those guys who was like, I'm standing in the middle of the stage and it doesn't yeah, matter just, how hard X Factor tries, I'm not going to dance. Yeah, going with the flow, eh? Pretty much. So I don't want to, I don't want to burden you with the, um, I, I don't want to burden you with the, um, uh, X Factor question straight off the bat, but I've got to ask straight away, um, where the hell is Jackie Thomas? Have you seen her? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, caught up with her the other day. She's still doing music. I mean, we're we're busy on our own ways, which is which is good. And yeah. um, I think she's putting out another single soon. So. Go Jack's though. I heard she was drinking under a bridge with Michael Murphy. That's just what I heard. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. Fenua, where do you live these days? Um, uh, based in Christchurch, but I've been in Wellington with my father at the moment. Yeah, yeah. just chilling out. So there. sort of between Christchurch and Wellington. Yeah, yeah. My father lives in Upper Hart, so 
Oh, yeah. shout out to Upper Hutt. Megan's from Upper Hutt. I love Upper Hutt. Lydia Co is not from Upper Hutt, no, we as we it found out, out earlier. No. <laughs> Megan claimed she was, but it just came to her in a dream. It did, it did. Uh, today's the big day that your debut album comes yes, out. Yes, yes, it is out right now, and I'm, I don't know what to feel. Eh? I'm oh, excited. You should be excited. excited. We'll We're give excited. a round of applause. <laughs> debut <laughs> album. Yes. That is awesome. Uh, tell session. tell yes. us a bit about the album. What's on it? What's it like? Um, So it was just like um, Sony had this crazy idea of doing an album full of soul songs and I was like straight away I was like hell yeah let's do it you know, yeah. I jumped on board and sort of threw back ideas of songs and then I put together a list of my parents favourite tracks and then oh. out of those tracks I chose mine and then what's on the what's on the list is yeah pretty much my favourite sort of Jams to sing. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. What's, so, what sort of stuff? What sort of songs like, oh, jams you man, sing? Yeah, like oh, like Otis Reading, Gladys Knight in the Pub. Old school. Wow. Really? Really? Temptations. Because like when a good city to make love to, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone said that the other day. Someone's gonna make babies to your album. I was like, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But when you think about your performances on X Factor, that's a perfect sort of music for you to do, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it sort of it felt right. So um. Yeah, straight away I was like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, yeah, so. exciting, man. Yeah. So the album is out on iTunes right now. Yep, and in stores, warehouse, JB Hi-Fi, and yeah. So, so when an artist like blows up like you, you always need like a sad backstory, and like you know, Jay Z's from the Macy Projects. Other people have had like relationship problems. Your sad backstory is Fenua Patuai. He survived X Factor. <laughs> 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 we've yeah. got a segment. We've got a segment that we wanted to pitch to you. It's called the Guy Sharon Clint Yet to Be Named Cover Challenge. <laughs> Catchy. Benny, Benny from X Factor's already done it. Yep. Um, who else has done it? We've had. Uh, we just had uh, Ed Sheeran has done it. Ed Sheeran's done it, obviously. Um, Ginny Blackmore gave it a go yesterday. She did um, Sam, Sam Smith. Smith stay with me. Oh yeah. Oh, I heard it. I heard it. That it's was, amazing, that was right? Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So we want to check you a song, and then we'll play a song, and then we'll come back, and you pick up the guitar over there and give it a go. Okay. Yeah. We've, we've had a request from the text machine. Someone uh, wants you to uh, sing the new Michael Jackson and Justin Timberlake song. Oh. Love never felt so good. It's it's a really tough song. That is pretty tough. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the studio the man who just reminded me that when I was hungry one night at X Factor, he gave me a free burger. He gave me his burger. That's how generous he is. <laughs> the wonderful, the amazing Fenua Patua. Make sure you grab his debut album. It's out in stores now. It's called The Soul Sessions. Now, Fenua, we've set you a challenge of doing the Guy Sharon and Clint yet to be named cover challenge. Yes. The song we've thrown you is uh, the new MJ song yes. uh, with Justin Timberlake, Love Never Felt So Good. Come on, come you can hear it in the background here. You've got your guitar. Is this song going to be a challenge for you? Yeah, uh, probably, but um, I'll just I'll give it a go. All right, man. <laughs> we appreciate you doing it. Oh. Here it is. It's live in studio right now. It's being filmed for Edge TV. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Fenua Patuai. love never felt so good. And I doubt if it ever could. Not like you hold me, hold me. Ooh, baby. Love never felt so fine And I doubt if it's ever mine Not like you hold me, hold me And the night is gonna be just fine Gotta dance, gotta see, can't believe I can take it Cause baby, every time I love you It's in and out my life So good, baby. Mm, love never felt so fine, and I doubt if it's ever mine. Not like you hold me, hold me, ooh, baby. Mm, love never felt so good, and I doubt if it ever could. Like you hold me, hold me, and the night is gonna be just fun. Gotta dance, gotta see, can't believe I can take it, cause baby, mm, every time I love you, it's in and out my life, in and out, baby, just tell me, mm, if you really love me, it's in and out my life, in and out, Baby, cause baby 
Love never felt so good. Doing a happy dance. Doing amazing. a happy dance. There's the coffee. There's the coffee coming out. Of that there. was unbelievable. That was so good. That was better than the original. Oh, yeah, ladies incredible. and gentlemen, that is Fenua <laughs> Patuai. That was live in studio doing the guy Sharon and Clint yet to be named cover challenge. You nailed that, bro. That was incredible. You you. Got a bit of a sweat going on yeah, from it. Man, yeah. Put, I see that song it. in a different light now. Yeah. <laughs> His debut album is out today. You can grab it on iTunes. I got to do the Michael Jackson. Um, the, the, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. The X Factor outro. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Fenua. Yes! Guy Sharon and Clint. Edge. Megan, you know what time it is, right? Oh, I think I know what time it is. It's time for the award winning segment. Oh. What? In Guy's mouth. mouth! This segment is BS. So we put something in Guy's mouth. He tries to tell us what's in Guy's mouth. Mm. You call us on 0800 The Edge and tell us what's in Guy's mouth. And if you get it right, you're going to win a prize. A double pass to go and see Transformers Age of Extinction in cinemas now. Guy, yeah, put it in your mouth. Do mm. I have to? Put you have to, in. mate. It's part put of your job. This is this is I I oh this is all something I that. like, but this is not gonna all of that. not in this quantity. <laughs> oh my god, all of that! You've got a huge mouth. <coughs> no. Oh, more. Right. Yeah. More. I think you need to get a little bit more. More. Oh. Use your finger. Oh, oh. More. <coughs> is he choking? He's actually oh. red. Oh my god, he's actually one more time. What's in your mouth? Oh, yum. Oh, put more oh. in. No! Oh. Yes. Does, ta- does it taste good? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I think he's actually choking. Oh, 800 The Edge. What's in Guy's mouth? If you can guess, then you'll win the prize. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep it in your mouth for this song, okay? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the game the whole family can enjoy. What? Hey. Guys. Hey. He's crying. What, what's in Guy's mouth He's is crying. still in Guy's mouth. That's what it is. One more time. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Megan, take the phones and see if we've got a winner. Okay. We have... Who on the line? Can't see your name. Who's this? Mega. Hello. Hi. Hi. What do you think is in Guy's mouth? Is it butter? No. <laughs> okay, Lika. What do you think is in Guy's mouth? Oh, it's Lika. Butter. Um, is it a but? Is it a banana? Oh, butter. No. no. It is. Guys, Kerry, you're what giving do you think it away, mate. We've got to go through a few Shush. more calls. <laughs> Kerry, what do you <laughs> think is in Guy's mouth? Okay, I reckon it's ice. Becky, what do you think is in Guy's mouth? Is it peanut butter? Guys, swallow, mate, and then tell us what you're trying to Oh, the things we have to do with this job. I got peanut butter all over my face. <laughs> hey, Becky. It's not yummy. It's not yummy. I was choking. I got gag, gag. I was gagging. He was crying. He was literally crying. I was Becky. saying to people who were calling in, peanut butter, and they were going, is it ice? <laughs> <laughs> what do you, where do you get <laughs> peanut butter? Right. Yeah, you did. Well, congratulations yeah, to you. But those other three people, you've got to have to take a long, hard look at your lives. Because, you know, life gets harder than this. I mean, come on. If you can't get this right, then what, what is going to happen? Be- oh. Becky, mate, you're off to Transformers. Congratulations. <laughs> No worries. Guy, Sharon and Clint. Itch. What are those filler news stories that the news busts out on days like today when there is literally no news? I'm going to throw one out to you right now. Um, Madeline McCann. Whenever there is mm. no news, stuff.com.newzealand Zealand or whatever it's called, busts out a story where they're like, where's Madeline McCann? New evidence. Because no one knows where she is. No one knows what's happening. So you can always just say new evidence. You know what the go-to is for them? What? What would Madeline McCann look like now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a classic one. And it's always a digital Every recreation of different. Madeline McCann. <laughs> the biggest low. Oh, Madeline McCann's going through her pop, pop punk phase, and she's got pink <laughs> highlights. <laughs> so, just to be clear here, we're not making light of the Madeline McCann situation because that is tragic. We're making light of the bloody news using it to fill time. And the worst example of this was right here in New Zealand when they bloody claimed that she was in Dunedin. 
Oh, that was yeah. a shocker. And they even had a photo. What a bunch of assholes to try and exploit that, eh? <laughs> Other news stories that they pull out to like fill in a bit of time. Here's a classic one. Team New Zealand funding. That always fires people up. Yes. They've got that one going recently. Yeah, that one's been going for the last couple of I weeks. I guess it has kind of been topical because they have been looking for it, but they always pull that out whenever they need an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Here's another one. Women's field hockey, all right? Field hockey isn't a sport. No one plays it. No one cares about it. <laughs> but on the news, when they've got a slow news week and there's no All Black stories or soccer stories or any like proper sports news, they bust out women's field hockey because the New Zealand women's f- field hockey team is beautiful and they look awesome on TV and fair enough as well. Did you watch the news last night? Uh, no, I didn't. I don't watch the news because, yeah, I'm working. They legitimately did a women's field last hockey. Night. Last Amazing. night. Last night. So the story was about the women's field hockey team uh, and the... <laughs> The um, uniform they've designed for themselves for the Commonwealth Games. Oh my! They've, what, they've designed their own unis this uh, year. One of the members is part of the design team. Yeah. Did they put in some short skirt shots? They put in a gratuitous, um, <laughs> sh- yeah, short short <laughs> shot. And then they had the girls walking um, like models in a flying V, wearing the formal wear, <laughs> as if they were like air hostess, a virgin. <laughs> Uh, and it was like tight pan up the body to the stunning field hockey ladies' faces. Dream filler story. 0800 The Eggs or Edge or text into 3343. What is your news filler story that you always see? Hey, Campbell, what's your story that you think the news always uses? Um, how well Lydia Ko's doing in some random tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time, eh? She could be in, like, the Malaysian Women's Grand Prix Open. You've never heard of it before, but it's the biggest news because it's Lydia Ko. Yeah. Yeah, just some random golf course. Yeah. And she's winning. <laughs> I got another one. I got another one. Stephen Adams is back in Wellington, which he is, like, every three weeks, and he's, um, he's coaching some kids. Yes, that's a big one. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Stephen Adams. Just our big success, success stories. Andrew, what do you think is a story that's always on the news when they need a fill it? Uh, anything about Auckland. Anything about, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Auckland true. traffic. Yeah. yeah. That's a classic. Though. Andrew, where do you live? I live in Rotorua. And hey, you, shout out. Yeah, shout out to Rotorua. Are you sick of that shit? They should do some more R- Rotorua stories, eh? What's, what's going on in Rotorua? Do you want to do a Rotorua story for us now? Oh, there's nothing going on right around. Oh, that's probably why they have to do stories about Auckland, eh? <laughs> yeah. to, to, to perfectly exemplify this, Breakfast TV is perfect because they do live crosses. The other day, the big story on the news was a crash in Matter Matter. They crossed live to that Chris Chang guy. He was standing, because I could recognise the flags, in Altair Square in Auckland. And to make it look more emergency, he was standing in front of the um, Altair Square, st- Square um, street sweeper, which has a red flashing light on it. To make it look like a police car, they got the red flashing light, Amazing. but it was a bloody street cleaner. I know it. I've been there. <laughs> Andrew, are you going to vote for Tamati Coffee in Rotorua this year? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sweet cool. ass. Classic Cheers, Rotorua do day. Uh, we've got Lisa on the line. What are one of the stories that they always use, Lisa? Field hockey, apparently. <laughs> uh, do you agree with Guy? I have a question. I have a question for you. Who the hell calls it field hockey in New Zealand? <laughs> What Me. other hockey is there? How much ice hockey do you think happening? <laughs> oh, God. Hey, Lisa. I, Lisa, I slammed women's field hockey before because I'm like, whenever they need a story, they go find they go find the babes from the New Zealand field hockey team, even though it's a niche sport, to um to put them on the news because they know they look beautiful and they can fill in some time. And how are they actually doing in the world at the moment? I have no idea and don't really care. I believe that they're second in the world at the moment. In Which is amazing. Going into the Commonwealth Games. Wow, well, that's pretty good. They're going in the Commonwealth yeah, Games. Who, who, who are they playing in there? Are they, are, they, are they having a tough game against Pakistan? <laughs> Guy. Uh-huh. Like, what do you guys think? Megan, what do you what? think? Do you like field hockey? Do you guys like don't, women's don't field stop hockey? Stop calling it field hockey. Hockey's great. <laughs> if they're, they're doing great in the world. I think we should support smaller sports much more than we do. There's, Absolutely. Yeah, but so do I. Extremely talented. So, I, I, so I'm into basketball, and I think basketball players are extremely talented. They never get on the news as yeah, filler they, because no one likes to film the big, ugly, lanky basketball <laughs> freaks. <laughs> He'll f- film the beautiful field hockey babes. Lisa, it's a double-edged sword, well, isn't it? It should be an added advantage, shouldn't it? Yeah, all right. People have been very angry at my field hockey comments. I'm gonna, we're going to go to war, and I'm going to watch out for them because they've got bloody sticks. I think the thing we can all agree on, though, is that the New Zealand women's hockey team are babes. Are babes. Yeah. We can agree on that. Lisa, can we agree on that? Definitely. There you go. <laughs> Some sort of resolution at the end of this. Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. So the newest thing to do in Australia, this is real. I've seen photos and videos. It's called bubbling. Yeah. And it's where men stand up, stand up they undo their zipper, they put their, 
manhood into a position of up and they pee into their mouths. Okay, so that's not a thing, but it thank you for thing. bringing that to the table, Chang, Megan. Chang is shaking his head. He you, wishes he had the chance to censor this break. A thing. You yes. are officially uh, fired. You can it's leave now, Megan. Thing. Thank you for that contribution. It's right. not a real thing. I'm with Guy. That's not a real thing. <laughs> it is re- I've seen photos of it. Where did you see a, this? A guy did it at a rock concert in Australia. It's called Bubbling. And, um, Why he, do you do it? Unsure. Apparently, it's the cool thing to do. It's like, whoa! I'm so jackass. If they still use that, like, <laughs> no, they don't still use that. <laughs> jackass the, hasn't been around for like five years. Am I in the noughties? Like early two thousands, right now? No. Apparently, uh, um, a guy did a rock concert. There's a very clear photo of him peeing into his own mouth. It's, okay. And um, so, it's for cool. a start, yeah. Is it safe for me to Google bubbling at work? Unsure. I haven't done it. I'm going to say no. How did you find out about this? What sort of websites are you browsing where this is a thing? Deep, 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 dark places on the internet. I kind of like click on random links and all of a sudden I'm like, how did I get here? You've fallen down an internet black (laughs) hole. You went on to buy a new dress on ASOS. Nick minute, (laughs) guys are pissing in their own mouths. Do you think maybe this is one of those like scam stories? No, I've seen. Photo. I'm going to find a yeah, few. I've okay, okay, okay. I see a photo. A guy's doing it um, yeah. uh, uphill. So a guy is... Um, that's quite impressive. He's see? standing up. It's a real thing. But it's also the stupidest and grossest thing that I've ever heard of. I actually, yeah. No, I know how I'm going to find it because I remember how I got there now. <laughs> it's an interview with a skater on Vice. And um, uh, they ask him about bubbling and his <laughs> skating. They ask him, does it make you a better, uh, a better skater? And he says, of course. <laughs> um, and they go, thanks for the lowdown. Any advice for the um, young Australians out there? And he said, bubble on. <laughs> <laughs> Chang, we've just had an idea for how does it feel next week. No! <laughs> no! That's a great idea! No. Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. One of my favourite things, and it's like a little like um, kind of surprise, is if you buy things online. Now, I don't want to put like, I don't like online shopping because it kind of like hurts like local on the street stores, and I love on the street shopping. But the great thing about buying things online is that you get a present sent in a box and you open it like it's Christmas Day. Have you noticed this, Megan? Yeah, I um, I only send myself things because I only get bills otherwise in the mail. So yeah. it's like an exciting thing. Like, oh my God, wonder what this is. And you paid for it a few days ago or like yeah. a week ago. So it feels so you've free. forgotten about that and then it arrives and it's like, oh my God, I'm so good to me. Clint yeah. just had a box arrive in the mail. Clint, oh, can we open it up here live on air? Yeah, we can get into it now. Yeah. Let's get it going. Let's see uh, what Clint has got arrived for himself. It's something he bought online. He knows what it is. No one else knows. This is <clears throat> my brand new, slightly used 1995 All Blacks jersey from Trade Me. Hey! It looks very used. <laughs> Megan's not into it. Can I, I just I say? Don't, I don't really understand. Very it. used? It does look very used. The it's- description on the Trade Me auction said excellent condition. Yeah. Well, there's no like burn marks in it, but it's. Um, straight. Am I allowed to say the F word on, on air? No. No. Okay. Well, that looks. Um, Friggin' fantastic! I, I think that is a bloody good purchase. Thank you. It's yeah, it's 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 it's, it's aged a little bit, but it's aged well. It is a long sleeve vintage '90s All Blacks jersey, the real one made by Canterbury of New Zealand with a man's collar on it, not like the not like the weird kind of uh, just line white line they've got the back of the neck now. Yeah. it's got the old school logo with New Zealand on it. It's so annoying that new, the new All Blacks jerseys just have All Blacks; they don't have New Zealand. It's because the bloody All Blacks can't they can't trademark. New Ze- uh, they can't trademark uh, New Zealand, so they just got that off the jersey, so they can just put their trademark All Blacks on it. And it's got the old school Steinlager logo, logo as well. This is the jersey that Jonah wore, except yeah. Jonah didn't have long sleeves because Jonah wasn't a pussy. And Jonah didn't wear that jersey because uh, it's not an original Jonah jersey. It's Could just be. a replica. Could be. It's quite stretched. <laughs> just, why did, like, why did, are you, did you buy that purely to wear it when you're watching All Blacks games, or are you going to wear this out in town? Like, I don't understand. Mate. I d- a jersey I d- like that, did you just- wear that shit to your wedding. That is you- a that is an artifact. Did you just sit down and you're on Trade Me and you thought, do you know what I want? Or did you go on to Trade Me specifically to get this? This is a this is a, a archaeo- ar- this is a piece of history, man. Yeah. I've been looking for one right. of these legitimately for years. Really? Call, call yeah. up call up to Papa. Tell them that you've got a new exhibit. Mm. People will pay money how much did to you pay see for that? the vintage All Blacks well, jersey. Megan, yes. how much would you pay for a twenty-year-old worn All Blacks jersey? I've got a guess: twenty thousand dollars. One thousand dollars for every year it is old. Close. I would say twenty-seven fifty. 
27 fit. 27 <laughs> yeah, there's, there's history right there There's history in the Do making you know If you went to an op shop Like really went around All the op shops in New Zealand I bet you could bloody find one The All Blacks I'll just have This might swing you The All Blacks in 1995 Lost a World Cup Wearing that jersey Thank you very much Does that change your mind? Yeah $16 now If they lost <laughs> For the record The jersey cost me $97 Oh that is a bargain I guess 20000 That is much cheaper than 20000 Plus shipping The guy ripped me off on shipping How do you, How much shipping mate? How much shipping? $7 $7 Tell him he's dreaming it took mate took a whole week to get here What an asshole yeah. Alright anyway a, a present from the internet should Clint's we, jersey Should we Instagram the jersey? That's quite cool. oh, Definitely mate Yeah 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 I genuinely think that's awesome I'm not taking the purse $97 is quite steep But if you're rich Like Clint Well yep. go hard <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint On the edge You are the wind beneath my we're going to finish the show, as we always do, on an inspirational note. Today's word goes to the star of headphone karaoke today, Chang Hung. Hi, Chang. Hi. I saw this on a, a book called The Power of Us, which is all inspirational Kiwis. And the, today's quote is from Dame Susan DeVoy. Jesus. The, um, okay. The race oh, relation God. minister. She's the racist race relations commissioner <laughs> who was a squash player. So they're like, oh, that's a great idea. Put her in charge of this, even though she knows nothing about it. She also went to my high school. Oh, <laughs> Just like, just like Lydia Cohen's L- one. Six degrees of separation here. Yes. Okay, so the quote from her is, Never forget where you came from. Never forget the people who helped you along the way. Don't forget your roots. Yeah. yeah. Sure six yeah, why don't you just, yeah, six. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, it's been so nice to fill in uh, for breakfast. Race relations minister. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so nice to fill in at breakfast for JJ, Mike, and um, Sam, or whatever their names it's are. It's not funny anymore, those for jokes, the- <laughs> They were never funny, but it doesn't stop me from doing it's, them. Hang on. It's just like when you say stuff.co.au. I don't want to give them a plug because they're a terrible website. That's why I do that, Chang. Oh so uh, so we've really enjoyed filling in for them. Thank you so much for listening to us. And JJ, Mike, and Sarah will be back <laughs> again next week. Thank you for all the constructive feedback on the text machine, yeah. too. It's been great. Megan's up next. Buy her Lauf. Come, Have a great day. <laughs> Come listen to us in the afternoons, by the way. We'll be on the afternoons next week. And tune in this afternoon when the Edge TV launches at 4 o'clock. See you later. Goodbye. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. On the Edge. There you go. There's a podcast. We'll be back on afternoons next week, which will be nice. It is nice working in the morning and getting the rest of the day off, but God, I hate getting up at 4.30 in the morning. I um, went to bed at 1 last night because I was late um, at work. So as a result, I got up for the show uh, like three and a half hours later. Yeah. And then I knocked back my first and second coffees of my life. Yeah. And now I just feel like a million bucks. Does your phone do that thing when you um, turn your alarm on, it instantly calculates how many hours sleep you're going to get? And it says, yeah. your, your alarm will sound in three minutes and 45 minutes. <laughs> how depressing is that, eh? Because yeah. I'm like, I just want to set my alarm and fall asleep and just I'll, I'll, hopefully I'll feel refreshed. Straight away it tells you, you're only going to get a, get a couple of hours sleep, mate. Yeah. You might not as well not even bother. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, when, when it was my o'clock the morning, I was like, I should just drive straight to the edge, curl up under the desk, and Clint will come and give me a nice wake up in the morning. <laughs> nice, a nice, nothing better than having old Clint wake you up in the morning when you're lying under the desk at your work. Just gently stir you and whisper in your ear and go, Guy. That would be really nice. Guy, wake up, mate. <laughs> Guy, it's your friend Clint. Hey, would you would you bring me any sort of food or anything like that? Guy, wake up, bro. It's time to do the show. Would you would you would you bring me some flowers? Guy, I bought you a cookie time bumper bar. Oh, that would be lovely. We should actually do that tomorrow, maybe. Tomorrow's Saturday. I'm not coming over. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the show, guys. And uh, come wake me up tomorrow, because uh, I, need, I, need, I need some love in my life. See you later. Have a good week. The Guys, Sharon and Clint podcast.